Christian girl filled with the Holy Ghost moved into an apartment with my boyfriend at the time. First of all, saying the word boyfriend just really, I, I can't get with it at this point in my life. Like, hey family, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Kamaria. If you don't know me, this channel is for all things faith-based, but most importantly, this is a channel where I talk about my journey as I walk through life with Christ. So if you're looking for someone to speak on their journey and give you the real, the raw of their journey with Christ, because it's, it's not the easiest. If you're looking for that, then you have landed in the right place and make sure you subscribe because we're getting ready to talk about my healing journey, okay? Okay, so today I have a story time for you. <laughs> so let's talk about it. I've told this story a little bit before, not on YouTube, but maybe on my podcast and on my Instagram. But, you know, God has really wanted me to share my journey, my testimony. That way it can be like learning for those who are walking through life with Christ as well. So that's the only reason I'm sharing this. So I have my journal right here just in case I forget what I have to say. But today's topic is the time I, a Christian girl filled with the Holy Ghost, moved into an apartment with my boyfriend at the time. First of all, saying the word boyfriend just really, I, I can't get with it at this point in my life. Like it sounds very much like just childish and like it just should not be said out of my mouth but also um to say this is a little bit you know it used to be embarrassing it's no longer embarrassing anymore because i know that i've learned from this but i was a christian woman filled with the holy ghost deciding to live with a man who did not have intentions on marrying me but was you know perfectly fine with me just being his girlfriend at the time so that was something that I shouldn't have did, but let's talk about the history of it. So even before that, um, him and I had lived in an apartment together. It was my apartment and I allowed him to stay there with me. But at that time, I, I wasn't really saved. I had not completely given my life over to Christ and I wasn't really trying to walk out life with Christ at that point. I actually got saved while in that apartment. And honestly, that's when like all hell broke loose in our relationship that we had at the time because I was starting to grow. I was starting to walk through the things of God, read my Bible. And so I was changing and the change that was occurring. It was honestly like bumping, bumping up against, you know, who he was and the things that he was dealing with, the things that he was currently doing in his life. So my change, the Holy Ghost being on the inside of me, it just completely shifted the trajectory and just the it shifted everything concerning that relationship. I had gotten to that relationship when I was in a very vulnerable place. I had actually just lost my father. And so, um, yeah, I was looking for security. I was looking for safety. I was looking for comfort. I was basically in a very vulnerable place and I had not allowed myself to heal before jumping into a relationship because I was, like I said, I was looking for that comfort, for that security and everything. I was living in downtown St. Louis by myself. So I was like, mm, I don't want that. And um, yeah, I welcomed him into my space and yeah, as I started to grow on my journey with Christ, like I said, I just, I began to change. And as I began to change, the whole relationship started to change and we were really like bumping heads and it just no longer felt the way that it did before. And I know now that's because I was not the person that I was at the beginning of the relationship at that point in time. So that's a whole conversation within itself. I think we want to talk about that because it's very important that you do not jump into relationships. Don't make big decisions or anything when you're in a state of vulnerability, because let's be honest, that's not really you. That's not your mindset. That's not how you usually think you probably thinking out of a place of hurt, pain and um, vulnerability. So that's another topic for another day. But let's talk about why me after being filled with the Holy Ghost, after walking with Christ, after, you know, just listening to him, why I decided to move in with this man okay so i was living in my own apartment you know 
just doing the things that I'm supposed to do, working, all of that good stuff. And I had got a desire, like a deep desire for ownership. Like I really wanted to purchase a home and I felt God telling me, I felt God showing me that, you know, I am supposed to own a home. Like ownership is for me. And I was paying a lot of money for my apartment and I no longer wanted to pay that. And um, I'm somebody that's been living on my own since I was about 18. So I've been paying rent for a long time now. Okay. I'm 26. So I've been paying rent on my own for a very long time. So I was like, you know what, God, I began to like add up all the amount of money I've spent on just rent. And I could have been paid off of my student loans. So I could have been almost through paying off of a home. And so because I started to like add that up, I'm like, okay, God, I want ownership. I want a home. And I began praying into it. I began looking into it. I was looking into different first time home buyer programs, everything. I found me a realtor looking into it. And as I was praying, I know I was coming up to the end of my lease. And before I even made it to the end of my lease, y'all, why did my leasing office give me a letter saying that they were going to increase the rent 35%? At that point, like I wouldn't have even been able to afford to live there. So I didn't understand why they were doing that. But anyways, I live in Arizona and the rent prices have gotten crazy. But there was a 35 percent increase in my rent. And I was like, yeah, God, I'm not doing that. I, I'm taking this as a sign that I need to be an owner of a home because who's about to be paying this for rent? And so I began looking for a home. I began working with a realtor, got in touch with some lenders and every lender that I applied for I did not qualify for a loan for a home and I was so frustrated because I was really praying into it and I really felt like God was showing me that you know at that point ownership was my portion but I could not get qualified for a loan and it was crazy because at that time um my my credit score is about a 780 I was making about fifty five thousand dollars a year and I didn't have any credit card debt or anything the only thing that I had was my student loans and so my debt to income ratio my student loans cost way more than the home I mean way more than what I was not way more but it was almost neck and neck with what I was making right so my debt to income ratio was not good so um Nobody would qualify me for a loan, not even the, the, um, what is it called? My bank. I have a credit union, not even the credit union that I banked with, who saw my transactions, who saw how much I made, who saw what was in my savings. Not even them would qualify me for a home. So I was just like, okay, God, everybody's saying no, but I still believe that there is a yes for me. So I kept praying. I didn't give up on it. I had full faith. I was fully convinced that God would give me a yes to somebody's lender. They would be able to qualify me for a home and my home buying process will go quickly. OK, like I was looking at about three months until I had to be up out of there. And I, I truly believe like I was standing on that belief that God was going to take care of everything. And I was going to just fly through the home buying process because it was my portion. Right. So that didn't happen. And, you know, I was I was really frustrated. I'm not going to lie, really frustrated with God. But I had to let it go because it ownership for me. I know it's my portion. I know it is my birthright. However, I know that timing, place, everything is important. And so God was showing me that it's my birthright it's, it's for me, but it just wasn't that time. And I've, I'm OK with that now. So that situation is what led me to staying with my boyfriend at the time. I'm going to stop saying that word because, like I said, I don't like the way it sounds. But that's what led me to stay with him. I had actually had a conversation with him, let him know, like, hey, I've been trying to move. Like, everything ain't even been going right. I don't even know why I was talking to him about this. I feel like when you're going through things, you just should not talk about people that you're supposed to be separating from. Like, I... I don't know, but I was talking to him about it and I was letting him know, you know, I had already put a security deposit on another apartment, but I didn't really want to move into that apartment because I really felt like ownership was my portion. Like I was, I was okay. I was stuck on that thing. And so I had put in a security deposit for a new apartment, but I wasn't feeling it. And my guy friend let's say that <laughs> at the time he told me that he had prayed that i would have to come and stay with him 
and so that we could basically work through things and you know work on the stuff that was the issues that we had which was separating us and in my mind I'm like oh you prayed for that maybe that's why like nothing's working like maybe we're supposed to work through this together maybe that's maybe that's what it's supposed to be and so I fell into that I allowed that to happen he came helped me move everything helped me get all my stuff like Help me with everything and got moved into his apartment. And y'all, first of all, I was still on my journey with Christ. So I was not going to be sleeping in the room with him. I was not none of that. Like that was that was not in the plans at all. And so he had a two bedroom apartment. So there was one side of the house where it was just me, my own bathroom, everything. Other side of the house, it was him, his own bathroom, everything. So both had our own bathrooms. I didn't have to see him. My work schedule at that time was nights and he worked during the day. So it was opposite. When I was at work, he was at home. When I was at home, he was at work. So it just it just worked out, right? But the first night I got there, I got my stuff moved in. I just felt like a heaviness, y'all. Like I was in the floor crying out to God like I'm not supposed to be here like why am I experiencing this I believed on you for a home I'm believing on you for this why am I here y'all like I cried like on the floor like because I literally felt a heaviness while being there it's like mm, this wasn't it so I was crying out to God on the floor and I think I cried for the first couple of days because I, I just knew and I felt in my spirit, this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be with this man. Like, why would I make this decision? Why didn't I have anywhere else to go? Like, God, I've been praying to you. I've been leaning on you. Like, why is this happening? And so throughout that process, like a lot of things just started happening. A lot of red flags, a lot of just just the way that I was feeling a lot of the way that I was feeling in my spirit let me know that I needed to get up out of there I didn't know where I was going but I know I needed to get out of there okay I know I needed to get out of there so my spirit became alarmed I was able to sense more things like I was able to just feel like feel when he was near the apartment like it just it became really crazy y'all so I made up in my mind like you know what god i need to exit this situation but i don't have anywhere to go because at that point i had quit my job y'all i had started a coaching business and it was doing well i had made 10k the first month that i had launched this coaching business so i'm like i'm gonna be good like everything is about to be well like it's good i needed this break from work but then, like I said, I started to, to I kept feeling things in my spirit that I was not supposed to be there. I no longer felt safe in that environment. So I knew that I had to get out of there. And so I'm like, God, help me get out of this situation safely. Let this be a, a good give me an exit plan, God. And so it came that my friend, my guy friend, he needed to go out of town for a couple of weeks. So for work so he left and as soon as he left i got my stuff i had to hire some movers that i did not have the money for and i got my stuff up out of there because like i said y'all my spirit became unsafe and i knew it was the holy ghost unctioning me to get out and once i prayed for god to make an exit for me and out of nowhere this man needed to go out of town baby i got my stuff and i got up out of there okay i didn't have anywhere to go so i started staying at airbnbs which That's a whole experience within itself, but I'm going to end up talking about that later. But I ended up going to stay in Airbnbs because I was fully convinced that God had me and I was not going to stay somewhere where I did not feel safe or where my peace just wasn't there. I was willing to go into debt to pay for an Airbnb rather than get the peace the healing and the understanding the relationship with god that i had built for it to be broken down by being in an environment that just wasn't conducive for me i was not willing to do that so i'm like okay if i go into that doing this god gonna pay me back because he knows why he knows i'm being obedient to him telling me to get out of this situation so that's what i did i got out of that situation but um my whole reason in sharing this is because this is something that I really had to heal from and 
this is something that I want to talk to those who are growing with Christ and you are you may be in a relationship you're desiring a relationship I want to just say like <laughs> this is a whole side note okay I really want us to do away with the overall term boyfriend and girlfriend because one it was never in the Bible okay it was you court it and you court it into marriage meaning it was no like no dating majority of the marriages was arranged so people knew who their wife was but either way it goes there was engagement and then after engagement there was marriage nothing before and after that no fornication no nothing nothing before or nothing before that it was just engagement and marriage so i really think we need to start looking at relationships as that and not moving in with nobody not not no none of that none of that until marriage is established so back to the story um i really had to heal from this okay i had to heal from the relationship i had to heal from just the reality of this is not the person that god wanted me to be with and i deep down i wanted to be with that person so i had to heal from all of that but the whole reason that I'm sharing this is just to remind you that if God tells you to like let something go, let it go. Because if you don't, it's going to cause more harm than good. This relationship was something that I was supposed to been let go before I even made it to the, the first apartment that I was in. Because I had moved from St. Louis to Arizona and God was letting me know, leave that relationship alone okay now he ended up following me to arizona that was none of my control <laughs> he followed me and came without me even knowing but i still welcomed him into my home and back into my life at that point but i should not have done that and so god put me in a situation where i it was clear he made it clear to me that no kamari you cannot be in this relationship and so i'm grateful for that but it did come with pain and so i'm talking to you and telling you to obey god when you first hear him and if whatever situation you're in whether it is a friendship a romantic relationship whatever it is if it does not line up with the word of god get out of it get out of it okay i told you i don't went into debt all types of things and in the root of it i'm not going to even say it was the relationship because god told me to end the relationship the root of that was disobedience not breaking away from a person when god told me to let them go okay so being tied to somebody it can cause you to do things that just don't make sense i was filled with the holy ghost following after christ even i asked at that time i had um leaders at a church i even asked them what they thought about it and my pastor at the time told me no don't do that and i did it anyway so yeah the result of that was not a not the best but i absolutely learned from it so that i can come and tell other people just don't do it okay make sure you are building godly relationships whether it's friendships or romantically okay look in the bible what what are the steps to marriage okay all of that look that stuff up look it up okay and so now what i look like what life for me looks like now is i'm continuing on my journey of healing i am aware that i am a wife okay right now i'm a wife i am the bride of christ so right now my duty is to be the best wife the best faithful woman that i can be to christ while he prepares me for my husband okay so that's what i'm doing i'm obeying i'm listening to the voice of god and i know now for the next relationship that god brings into my life it will not look like the last i will not follow the steps of the last i will obey god and let him be the center and the root and the fullness of everything that I build, whether it is a relationship, like a friendship or a romantic relationship. OK, I'm not going to allow myself to go out of the will of God because that is consequences to it. And it's going to be a process of healing if it brings some hurt or some trauma. OK, so that was my whole purpose in, in sharing this. I hope this story time about the time I decided to move in with the man and I should not have been because there was no intentions no no ring on my finger of marriage i shouldn't have did that and so it led to a whole bunch of series of things it led to a broken heart it led to disobedience to my god and so hopefully from this story time you learn from it and you you know you don't put yourself in that situation like i did just don't don't do it
guys so that's the end of this video i'll be talking about more of my journey in hopes to you know give someone insight help somebody remove their self from a situation anything that i could possibly do to help people um and i do want to end this in prayer so if you don't want to listen to prayer then don't listen but i'm getting ready to pray Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for being a mighty God. I thank you, Lord, that you love us. I thank you for your provision. I thank you that you are a faithful God. And I thank you that you are a great father. Father God, I ask right now that you would just speak to the people that's listening, O oh God. Speak to their hearts. And I ask that you will begin to reveal to them what relationships are ordained by you, O oh God, and what relationships were sent from the enemy. I pray right now that you would just help them remove people that don't belong. And I pray that you send people to them and them to people who you've ordained and orchestrated their lives to be connected with oh god i pray that as you remove the people you you heal them and you fill the voids that they may feel like will be there oh god and i pray that you just truly cover their mind their hearts and their spirits and let them be able to let go out of obedience and receive all of you oh god and everything that you have for them so i pray for even those with a broken heart even for those who have dealt with the breakup even for those who are in a tough situation right now that you will truly heal them oh god give them strength give them capacity to push through and obey you by any means so i thank you for a healed heart i thank you for a whole heart i thank you for a sound mind oh god and i thank you for a spirit that is charged up with the fire of god i thank you in the mighty name of jesus christ amen all right guys so i love you and i'll see you in the next video where i'm sharing something about my testimony or something that i did okay love you peace